Welcome to this week's episode of Superior Angling. I'm your host Grant Sorensen. If you're new to our channel, check us out on Facebook, YouTube, Instagram. We're putting out an episode a week for season four. It's gonna be fun, ice fishing and open water. We have a lot of content coming your way. A lot of these episodes are filmed and edited within a week or two weeks, so it's a lot of good, relevant content. Today, we are on a significant Minnesota river system we're going after sturgeon. So behind me, you can see there's open water. It's sketchy, there's a lot of snow on the ice, there's slush, there's probably pack ice underneath here. It's gonna be a lot. I don't even know if we're gonna be able to get a hole drilled to get after these sturgeon. I don't know, we're gonna have to see. It's gonna take some work. We have an ice saw with us, we have an auger, we have a chisel, we have ice tongs, we have all the necessary equipment to try to get a hole drilled and to go after sturgeon in the winter time. There's big fish here action can be very fast paced if it can get to the spot we're gonna have to go close to that open water but we're gonna be very very safe we have our striker suits on i'm gonna put on my jacket so i have full flotation we have ice picks we have a rope all the necessary safety gear safety is always number one fish are number two you know as, as much as as, as you like to catch big fish you got to keep safety in mind we're gonna get out here and see what we can find stick with us it's gonna be a good one Big fish, oh my goodness. Yeah. Big fish, big fish. Now that's a sweet October musky. Fish, 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 fish. That's a big Atlantic, boys. You guys saw right there firsthand how much ice there truly is. Yes, there's open water a mere 20 feet behind me, but you could have a vehicle on the ice right here. It is not a dangerous spot, not dangerous conditions. It just looks a little bit bad. But what we found, we checked with the graph, a little bit of a shelf spot. So sturgeon, you know, if you're walleye fishing, if you're trout fishing, you kind of want to be on a break sometimes on that down slope or rise. Sturgeon, you want more of a flat break. You don't want to be in a sharp contour. You want more spread out contours. So we found a couple holes that only vary one foot to two foot, you know, vertical depth within a horizontal range of maybe 15, 20 feet. So very, very slow break. That's gonna allow these sturgeon to kind of sit on bottom, kind of do their thing. They don't like to be like this swimming up and down the breaks. They like more of a, a flat bottom that they can, you know, just keep their bellies on bottom and just kind of cruise around and look for food. That's what we found right here. So we are gonna, there's actually a surprisingly decent ice conditions. There's not much pack ice under there. There's not much slush. Sometimes you can't even get a hole drilled. So. We are fortunate. Let's uh, set up the house. Let's start ice sawing a hole. That's going to be a fun experience and yeah, get some lines done before too long. All right, now the real work starts. We have our four holes cut. We're going to ice saw them out so it's easier to get the big sturgeon up. Yes, you can fit some sturgeon through an eight or 10 inch hole, but there's giants out here. If you hook a hundred pounder, you're gonna want an ice saw. So 
Luckily we got this one here. We are gonna put her in there and let her rip and make a bigger hole for ourselves. It'll be easier to get these fish up and be easier to um, release them and make sure that they release well. So let's get after it. Guys, this is, I can't make this up right now. Brian's got a sturgeon on and we don't even have anything set up. I still have to rig up these rods. I was gonna show you guys how, how we rig up rods. Like I haven't rigged anything. I had one rod that had some line on it and I said, Brian, go ahead and just drop it down. He drops it down a second later. He's got a sturgeon on. We don't have our wireless mics on. We have nothing set up. The house is a complete mess. It's a mess. <laughs> But Brian's like, I got a fish. So I hand him the rod, boom, drops it on, fish on. I mean. It took a lot of work to get down here and set up. I needed to get my fishing in. <laughs> I didn't think it would happen this fast. Uh, that's like a dream. Like, this is incredible. Like, I didn't even like, yeah, we still have a lot of footage to shoot before we even get lines in the water. Here Brian is hooked up with the sturgeon. I mean, what the heck? This could get crazy. This winter, take charge on the ice with the Phantom Lures Budzo. Available in three sizes, ranging from one-fifth to three-eighths ounce, the Budzo is ideal for every fishing scenario. With its internal rattle and 12 vibrant fish-catching colors, this lure is sure to be your top bait on the ice. Ideal for big walleyes in the shallows, aggressive trout out deep, and slab-sized crappies in the basin, the Budzo is a proven fish-catching machine. Check them out online at phantomlures.com or in-store at Marine General in Duluth today. At Eskimo, we have the tools to help you enjoy your time on the ice. If you're looking for a lighter, faster, smoother auger, check out the Pistol Bit. Weighing only four pounds and optimized for efficiency, the pistol will maximize the life of your cordless drill battery, cut quickly, and easily re-drill old holes. Thanks to its stable centering point, check out the pistol and our full line of products at GetEskimo.com. Now through March 29th, take advantage of rebates up to $3,000 on select Lund boats from RJ Sport & Cycle located in Duluth. We sell everything from fiberglass ties and Pro-Vs, perfect for the big water and space for the family, to tillers, side councils, pontoons, and much more. Our friendly and knowledgeable sales staff is here to answer all your questions and to help get you into your next Lund boat. Visit us in-store or online at rjsportandcycle.com today. Protect your investments this winter with an enclosed trailer from Wittis Trailer Sales, located in ESCO. We also sell cargo trailers, utility trailers, snowmobile trailers, and much more. Did you know we stock a full line of Heinecker snowplows? While you're here, shop the largest selection of Mahindra tractors in the area. Don't forget about our service center, ready to tackle jobs of any size. Wittis Trailer Sales in ESCO, where customers become friends. That fish isn't happy, buddy. No, he's, he's really not. He's not happy. But that's why it pays is to do some homework. Take, I mean, yes, you're, oof, yes, you're anxious to get out here and drop a line down and start fishing right away. But I mean, we took maybe half hour to find a spot that was a little more flat than the rest of the area around here. So, I mean, it really pays off to do your homework, invest some time into finding a good location. Yes, you could find a good location. There couldn't be any fish there. It happens a lot. We lucked out, there are fish here, but I think truly it's, we're hooked up with this fish because we took the time to find this gradual sloped spot where the sturgeon are hanging out. How's she feeling? Are your arms tired yet? <laughs> they actually are, yeah. <laughs> He's coming though now, so hopefully. It's gonna be nice having the spear hole. We're gonna get a, get a good visual at it. Oof, that's digging, man. You're holding that drag too. It's a big fish. I'm trying to tire him out, but I think he's winning. It's a big fish. And we're going to go into detail about our gear setup here. It's a very strategic gear setup. And you want to, you know, have heavy enough gear to remain ethical on these fish. You don't want an hour long, two or three hour long fight. Yes, an hour long fight could happen with this gear. You know, it, it's happened to us in the past, but have enough gear where you can get these fish up. They're not dying of exhaustion. They're going to swim away. They're going to be okay. 
So our goal is not to keep any keep any fish, strictly catch and release here. We just want to see this fish. This is our warm up fish. This is our practice, a bonus fish, and I'm stoked to see it. You know he's close because he's doing smaller circles, right? There it is. That's a good one. There he is. Holy cobra. <laughs> Oh, that's a pretty good one. <laughs> I'd say so. Yeah, that's a good way to start. Holy, that's a good one. <laughs> Look at that, Brian. That's a big one, Brian. Brian, that's big. That is. <laughs> this is hard to do. <laughs> it's not easy. <laughs> what is this? <laughs> hey buddy, that's huge. <laughs> that's how you started off. That's how you started, Dan. Yeah. That's a warm up fish, guys. Oh, is that thing heavy? Oh, that is thick. You're gonna hook right in your mouth. That's unbelievable. This day is gonna get epic. I'm telling you guys, this is our warm up fish. <laughs> she's she's a solid 50, 60 pounds. What do you think? Yeah, that's... You know, you know your surgeon more than I do. That's big fish. It's a good one. <laughs> Look at that. Unbelievable, guys. Unbelievable. Tiny little dead minnow. It didn't take long. All right, so here's what we got. This is the 42-inch St. Croix Rods CCI Apex Predator Rod. The rod you want to use going after sturgeon, big pike, big lake trout. This is it, guys. Recoil guides if you're fishing outside. It's a heavy power, lots of backbone, a longer grip to give you leverage. You can really put this, this cork against your forearm and get leverage to get those fish up. This is the rod, let me tell you. This is 20 pound test, Suffix 832 braid. I'm gonna spool this reel up. This is a 2500 Shimano CI4. 20 pound test line is really gonna allow us to give the fish some beans and get them up. Yes, we want to remain ethical, keep that fight time as low as we can just to give the sturgeon the, the best chance at, at survival and not stress them out, not tire them out. We're not killing any fish, we're not keeping any fish, 100% catch and release. We're just out here for the fun of it. So we don't need a ton of line on our reels, but what we do need is heavy. We're gonna cut that. Do you tie direct or do you use a shock absorption leader? No, I just go straight to the braid. Yeah, I if they're gonna if they're real big and they're gonna do lots of runs, you can loosen your drag a little bit. I may, I mean, this is 30 pound test mono here. It's gonna give me a little bit of stretch since we're using such heavy rods. There's so much current. If that fish does turn sharp, I'm I'm gonna opt for a little bit of a shock absorption leader. Brian's not. He's straight braid. It worked just fine on that fish. You probably can't go wrong either way. Just for a peace of mind, I'm gonna use it. We don't worry about line color. This is a river system, flowing water. A surgeon's not gonna come up and sniff your bait and be like, oh, his line's green, I'm not gonna hit it. They're not like that, so thankfully, we don't have to worry about that, but. All right, we have 20 pound test back, or braided on here. We have a 30 pound test. It's a four foot section, a liter. In terms of jigs, we went to, just went to Marine General and just bought some lake trout jigs. I mean, just something. There's nothing technical here, guys. I mean, that's a dollar jig. It's just a big lead head, about, what's this one? Ounce and a half. You just want something, there's a ton of current here. So you want something that's heavy. Surgeon will just pick it up off bottom. They don't care. So really what we're just gonna do is tie direct onto here. This is a really strong hook. That hook's not gonna bend. That's what you want. We're just gonna tie direct right to this jig. I'm not gonna be changing jigs throughout the day. It's not gonna matter. We're gonna load this thing up with minnows and let it soak on bottom. And that's really all there is to it. There's nothing too technical about this. But the biggest part about it is location, location, location. So all right there, that's game time. Ready to play. All right, there's a sturgeon rig, 42 inch Apex Predator, 2500 Shimano, 20 pound braid, 30 pound monoliter. We're ready to rock and roll. Oh man, that felt good. 
that felt good. Oh, he ain't happy. He ain't happy. Oof. Feels pretty good. It, I got a couple of cranks in it right away and it didn't feel that big, but it's taken some big runs. Well, they fool you. A lot of times at the beginning, they, do, they, they, they don't are, feel like much of anything and then, yep, yep, and it, then they are. They can so. be very deceiving. No, let's be a nice little gentle 30 pounder, huh? Sometimes after catching a big one, yeah. you want a smaller one. <laughs> I agree. I uh, hope my next one's a four pounder. That's what I always say, like, saltwater fishing is you don't want to catch the biggest fish in the salt water that's kind of this like i mean it would be nice but you're going to be hurting if you catch the biggest fish <laughs> this reel is getting a workout <laughs> yeah it might be bigger than i initially thought it might be bigger but you're just gotta hold your jig you made him mad i did make him mad i called him not that big <laughs> just hold your jig right on bottom and just wait to feel something different get a get a feel in your mind of what you know nothing feels like and if anything deviates from that lift up and you're probably going to feel weight and then just set the hook so you know it's just a, it's just a hold and every now and then bring it up and you know drop it back down to make sure you're still on bottom and you have good contact with bottom but there's not a whole lot to it. It's just all location, 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 and then bait presentation. All right, we're gaining some ground. She may be getting a little tired. I'm sure she's got plenty of energy, but we're gaining on her right now. How's your energy? My energy levels are depleting fast. Fast. Look at, she's, there she is. There she is. That's a nice one. Oh. That's a nice one. <laughs> It's a big one. Yeah. Look at that jig, her hooked perfectly right in the mouth. Got her fin, buddy? Look at that guy. <laughs> what else can you say, huh? I'd uh, shake your hand with some folks, my arm is just dead. Yeah, that wasn't much of a grip. It's a spaghetti noodle. Very respectable, respectable sturgeon. Look at that. Are you sure healthy? <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting tired. Yeah, me too. Between like ice sign and hauling this stuff out here, there's well, so much snow. We still have to get everything out of here. We have to get everything out of here, and so. oh, it's been an exhausting day, but in a very, worth very it. good yeah, way. Very worth That's it. That scene right here. All right. Oh, oh, that's a good one. I set the hook and nothing moved. The rod doubled over and it feels pretty heavy. I'm not winning. <laughs> oh, I love this. Brian, you set the hook on this fish and it just like stopped. Yeah, that was like setting it into a snag. <laughs> a snake that's now moving with big fins. Ooh. What do you have? I don't know. I love it though. I love this rod. Aren't they nice? They really are. We introduced the CCI Apex Predator to Brian and he's 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 digging it right now. I'm loving it. I'm loving it. <laughs> oh, I don't think I'd want to have this fish on a different rod right now, that's no, for sure. You would not. You would not. I just hope the hooks hold up because the hooks aren't as strong as the ones on my jig. <laughs> no, they're not designed for sturgeon fishing, but they sure work good. But they're very effective, yes. Yeah. This is a, this, this could be big, but um, could be, it is big. It could be massive. 12.46, the clock says. Brian hooked this fish at 12.15. It's been a battle. We got it close though. We put the Markham down there to see where this fish is at. We have him about 10 feet below the ice right now. Brian's arms are getting tired. Yeah, he's back on bottom. <laughs> it's a it's a big fish, guys. This is huge. And we're loaded up with heavy gear, so I mean, there's really not much we can do with a fish of this caliber. We're thinking well over that 50, 60 pound range. Who knows though? We're gonna give you a glimpse at it soon. There he is. Holy big, smoke. Big, 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 <laughs> big. Yep, yep. Oh my gosh, Brian. I didn't, I didn't. Oh my gosh! Brian? Brian? Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! 
Brian? I don't know how I'm gonna be gentle with this after seeing them, but Brian, I'm gonna have eight, to. That's 80, 90 pounds. Maybe more. Holy no smoke. Guys, that's mind blown. That's how big that fish is. That's scary. Oh. That's scary, Brian. I know, and now we've seen them. Now I want to put pressure, more pressure on them, but we can't. The tackle's only so strong. That's a big, the weakest part of this whole equation is your the hook on your jig. It is the hook that works so good, but that's the weakest link. That's the weakest link. At least we know that and we're conscious of that because we can take that into consideration now because it's high stakes poker now that we saw this fish. It is mind blowing huge. Oh, Brian. That is Brian. huge. Brian. Oh my gosh. I don't even know what to do right Brian, now. What are you Brian, look at how big that fish is, Brian. Ah, hang on. Brian, oh my goodness. The current's pulling him away. He quit fighting, but the current's doing it. Okay. Brian? I don't know what to do. He's stuck. <laughs> you got him? Brian? Oh my gosh. <laughs> Oh my gosh! 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 He's gonna pull me in! What just happened? Oh. What just happened? Well, he just caught the biggest sturgeon ever caught through the ice, that's for sure. Oh. Look at this fish, Brian. <laughs> I don't even get him to lift it. Oh, guys, that is a fish of a lifetime <laughs> through is. the ice. It truly is. It truly is. What? Look I at, mean, what do you think this is in in, in weight? That's got to be eighty pounds. Eight, all at, of eighty. At least. At least. At least it's 80. It's thick. It's huge. I just, I don't know what else to say, man. <laughs> Crazy. Enough. When we care about something, it shows. To help protect these things, call on the knowledge and experience of a local independent insurance agent that you know and trust. Some things we just can't afford to lose. And that is why we exist. Because the worst brings out our best. Holden Insurance, Duluth and Superior. Hey everybody, it's time to go ice fishing and no place better to shop than Marine General. Ice tents, augers, fish finders and underwater cameras, rods and combos, boots, gloves, jackets and bibs. And the best prices anywhere. Marine General, London Road in Duluth. Come on in to Marine General and get outdoors with us. This week's health tip is brought to you by St. Luke's, the patient above all else. Hi, I'm Dan Freeman. I'm one of the emergency medicine doctors here at St. Luke's. I'm here to talk to you today about something near and dear to our hearts in our St. Luke's health tip. Today I want to talk to you about frostbite and hypothermia. So there's a lot of things that we can do to prevent frostbite, and that's probably the most important. Number one is recognizing the conditions you're gonna go out in. Number two is bringing with adequate layers, making sure you're wearing a moisture wicking base layer. That'll bring all the moisture away from your skin and help to get the heat out. Number two is bringing extra layers with. If you know you're gonna go do something strenuous, like pull your ice house across a lake, go on a fat tire bike, or go skiing, bring with a fresh base layer to change into once you're done getting sweaty. Because once your sweat starts to cool, you're gonna get cold fast. If you think you've gotten frostbite, the first thing you should do is let it be until you get to a place where you know that freezing won't occur again. Once you get to a place where you know that you're going to stay warm, then you can take all your layers off and start to rewarm the area that's frostbitten. If it's a hand or a foot, the, mo the easiest thing to do is to place into warm water. If you can circulate it, all the better. If it's a face, warm washcloths work really well. After that, you should either go to the emergency department and have somebody check it out, or you can follow up with your regular doctor in clinic to have them take a look at it. Just because frostbite will take some time to show up to know exactly how much damage you had. Thanks for listening to today's St. Luke's Health Tip. That current's really ripping, hey? It really is. So an ounce and a half jig, you have a lighter jig on maybe an ounce, but again, surgeon fishing is all about being on bottom and maintaining contact with bottom. 
Just kind of hold that, hold that jig. You don't want to be jigging it like you are for walleyes or anything else. You're just kind of a dead sit on bottom. I just felt the fish swim through my line. Yeah. You'll feel that a lot. <laughs> and just kind of, and that's what's nice about the braid. You're going to feel fish pick it up. You're going to feel fish swim through your line. You're going to, you're going to have all that sensitivity. And just kind of hold it. And it's a patience game. We didn't have to have too much patience <laughs> for that first fish. No, it normally doesn't work quite that fast. No, no, it doesn't. But sturgeon fishing, it's a patience game. It's a sit there, soak your baits, put your time in. You're going to have success. Right there, there's a bite. Watch my rod tip. Right, he's taking it. Look at this. We're gonna drill him. Got him. That's heavy. That's heavy. Oh, he's not moving. That's heavy. He's that. not moving. He is not moving. Oh yeah, that's a good one. This is a good one. That's a good one. It was cool. He like picked it up and he could just see it in the rod tip and then boom. It's a good fish. We filtered through some smaller ones there for about an hour. It's very interesting to note that they come in waves. The current picks up and like you'll get a bunch of small fish and the current dies. 20 minutes later, the current picks up again, big fish. We just called that too, didn't we? Yep. The current picked up. We're about to get another one and it was what, 10 seconds? Yep, yep. It was very quick. So current has so much to do with sturgeon movement on river systems. I mean, it's kind of like it dictates what they do and you know when they move around when they feed i mean the current changes out here a lot oh it's constantly changing yep yeah. yep it feels so far like the heaviest fish <laughs> of the day for me <laughs> but you don't know how you have them hooked you don't i mean you just don't know you don't know i you do got know a pretty my good forearm. idea i do know my forearms <laughs> things right now <laughs> it's literally pulling my bucket <laughs> Here, here it is. Oh yeah, that's big. Oh! oh. <laughs> that's big. Oh how, my gosh. How the heck are oh we gonna- Oh my gosh. What are uh, you gonna do? What are we gonna do? That's big. That's big. Holy cow. Yes. Brian, that's long. <laughs> that's long. I'm watching it go down and it's a few seconds before the head and the tail. That's long. She's all ours. Come on up to the- Top side, girl. <laughs> <laughs> That's a big fish. That's a big fish. <laughs> oh, are you trying to give me a kiss? Look at that fish. Look at that fish, guys. That is a behemoth of a sturgeon through the ice. What a way to end the day. I can't describe it. How much fun that is. Oh, what do you think, buddy? <laughs> Ooh, not as heavy as yours was, but it's up there. It's a good fish. Wow. From Brian and I, thank you guys for watching. We will see you next time. <laughs>